I found this dresser on Craigslist and it was in um, beautiful condition, which actually I try to buy pieces that are really rough that have a lot of water rings and stains and stuff like that so that I feel a little bit better about painting them. Um, this one though, just so you know, is not a super old piece. It's a reproduction of an empire dresser and it um, has been refinished at some point. Whoever refinished it really knew what they were doing though and they did a great job. So, sorry to whoever refinished it. Uh, but I am gonna paint it. That's why I buy pieces. Well, I don't always buy them to paint them. I buy them to fix them up. And uh, I am outside in Minnesota in October. And if you can see, there's like snow. We just had snow yesterday and it is a kind of cold, blustery day. So I apologize for any like scurrying of leaves or any of um, sound issues or anything like that. But I'm going to take a minute. I'm outside so I can show you how to prep this piece. I am going to sand it and that's something you don't want to do inside if you can help it at all because there's just, it's difficult to control the dust. So it's much better done outside. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the hardware off. And I'm just going to use a, um, this has the, a flathead screw, so I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver and, um, and just take them off. I may end up using these knobs. I'm not sure yet. Um, I kind of wait till I finish a piece and then I'll try on knobs and see what I like. But I definitely want them off for painting and for um, sanding. And now I'm going to get this piece sanded. And the point of sanding it is not to completely remove the existing finish. The point is to just scuff up the surface so that um, the paint will really be gripped by the surface. I had to think about how to say that, but um, that's the whole point of it. Um, it's called giving the surface tooth so that it can grip whatever um, paint or new finish you put on it. Um, it also just, well, in this case, this piece is beautiful, it's nice and smooth, but most of the pieces I buy have either a really bad poly job, a really bad paint job, it has like chipping or flaking veneer, a chipping finish, so sanding it just kind of smooths everything out and gives you a nice surface to paint on. It does not have to be this like thorough sanding job that takes you hours. It really... A piece like this should only take you about five, maybe ten minutes if you're very meticulous. Most of, most of the dressers this size, something just blew over. <laughs> um, most of the dressers that are this size take me about five minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and sand it. I'm using an orbital sander. These are not a very expensive tool, and if you do DIY, you should definitely have these. Or if you're going to be doing at least a few pieces of furniture, get one of these. If not, you can just use even one of these sanding pads or a sanding block and, um, and just rub it by hand and that'll be fine. This just speed th speeds things up a little bit. And I'm going to be using 80 grit sandpaper and 80 is a good grit to give a surface tooth, kind of remove a little bit of a finish, but it's not going to really mar the wood, especially if you're working on a soft wood like a pine or something like that. Um, this is not pine, but if you're working on a piece that's very soft, you don't want to use a super heavy grit paper or it's going to really scratch up the surface and you might see that in the finished product. So you don't want to do that. You just want it to be um, a rough enough sandpaper that it'll really um, give the surface some tooth. So when, it, when you're talking about sandpaper, the lower the number, the rougher it is, the higher the number, the finer it is. So the other thing is I am, Going, oh, where'd it go? I'm gonna wear a dust mask. Oh, I put it in here. Um, you definitely wanna wear a dust mask when you're sanding a piece of furniture. Um, not only does it just keep your nose clean, if you sand without one, you will end up with a bunch of dust in your nose. You'll be like blowing it out throughout the day. Ask me how I know that. And you also don't know what kind of finish is on the piece. So you just don't want to get anything that could be harmful to you in your lungs. That's another good reason to do it outside. Um, if you're dealing with a piece that has lead paint, 
I would say don't use this method to sand it. You want to go to the EPA's website and find out how to take uh, steps when you're working on a piece of furniture that has a lead finish. There we go, it's all sanded and ready to um, paint. I will run a vacuum over it very quickly. You can also just wipe it with like a microfiber cloth or something just to get the dust up, up off of it. Um, the last thing that I need to do to this piece is um, there's some contact paper inside the drawers. Whoops. And this is a trick when you have the hardware off, just stick a screwdriver in the hole to open the drawers. Um, and I do usually work with pieces that have inset drawers. I work with the drawers in, which is easier. I don't have to have drawers all over my workspace. I mean, I'm on the driveway, but if I'm in the inside in a room, I don't have to have drawers laid out all over the place. Um, so I probably will take these ones out when I paint, but we'll see how it goes. These ones actually have little handles underneath, which is kind of cool. I hadn't seen a piece like that before. So, to pull up this contact paper, let's see, I'll pull it out and show you what I'm working with here. Just kind of nice 1990s contact paper. And now there are times when contact paper is just not going to come out. It's like cemented in there. But I think I got lucky. shelf liner and I do that because it's not permanent people can take it out they can change it out if they're you know depending on what they're using it for if I put some contact paper down or do some kind of mod podge or something um, I'm just kind of maybe creating a problem that somebody has to undo later on um, just like with this contact paper so not necessarily a problem but maybe Contact paper is such personal taste, like what the pattern is and stuff. So I like to leave it pretty neutral. Guys, it is cold out here. My nose is starting to run. My hands are like turning pink and they're cold.